Okay, this is a response video. I apologize for any audio quality issues with this. I'm not at home, so I'm recording this on my laptop out and about. And um, today, I'm going to respond to a comment that I got about a month ago. Just finally getting around to answering it. And this was on a, a video I did uh, using BusyBox's HTTPD and running scripts using the CGI bin folder. So I do recommend checking out that video. But uh, basically, uh, this person here is asking, uh, if you want to use a Lua script, uh, can you put it inside a bash script like this and then make it executable, right? You could do that, but that's really not the uh, best way to do that. And what I mean by that is when you set up HTTPD with uh, the CGI bin, any executable script or compiled program you put in the CGI bin folder will be executed, can be executed, and it will be executed as whatever user you started the CGI bin or the HTTPD as, uh, your, your web server as. Um, so although you could create a bash script and then call a Lua script in there, you could also just call Lua script uh, directly. So here's an example. Uh, on my local host on port 8888, I've started up the HTTPD uh, with BusyBox, and I have a hello world. This is a Lua script, as you can see. And uh, if I go in here, you can see uh, I just give it, you know, the Lua script uh, shebang line, and we have a hello world. The only difference between, you know, uh, your standard Lua script and this script is that you have to have you have to tell, again, the web browser when it's requesting stuff what type of file this is and then have two new lines after that. So we have content type, um, text, and it's plain, it's plain text. And then we give it the two new line character and then we can output, you know, hello world. And if we were to come here and copy this and paste it a few times, save it, I can now refresh the code over here. And as you can see, it's printed hello world a couple of times. Now it's important to note the content type that you're outputting. Uh, we're working with plain text here, but we can also do HTML as I've showed in previous videos. Uh, so go ahead and save that as HTML, but you'll notice now that our formatting is different because HTML doesn't recognize our new line characters being put out by our print function. If we were to look at the source code of this, you can see that um, we do have uh, it formatted as text, but the HTML output is different. But with HTML, obviously, you can output HTML. So if I wanted to make you know, this one look like a button. I can easily put in button tags. And there we go, I have a button there. And if I wanted a new line here, I can easily put in a line break. And if I wanted to, you know, anything, anything with HTML. So uh, you can have whatever formatting you want uh, with the output of your script. And of course, you can also output data, you know, such a, in formats such as like uh, uh, CVS or JSON. Uh, but that's it. I mean, and again, this could be any, this could be C, this could be C++, this could be Perl, this could be Python, obviously Lua or Bash or some other shell. Uh, as long as, you know, it runs on your system, the only thing you need to do different is make sure you output uh, this content type at the beginning of the file. And there's lots of different type of content types. Right now we're talking about uh, text, HTML, or plain text. Uh, but you could have a script that passes an image if you'd like, but then you'd have to you know, let it know that it was a, a JPEG image or a PNG image here. Um, but yeah, uh, I wanted to just touch on that because this is a great way, if you do it you know, securely, to remotely access data on your system. You can have scripts run and output information. And again, here we're creating a user interface using HTML, but you can also just output, you know, uh, again, uh, your data in a format that your another server can grab or your web browser can process. Um, so that's it. I just wanted to, to comment on that. Uh, I think that use it, user uh, Jan for asking that. Sorry, it took me a month to answer it. But yes, the way you said it would work, but if you're really just using a Lua script and not running any other bash in there, you're better off just creating a Lua script and calling it, you know, from your, you know, web browser. That's it. I do thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. It's the link in the description. Again, sorry about uh, any audio issues with this video. Um, I'm kind of making it on the spur of the moment while I'm out. Thanks for watching, and as always, have a great day.